In this video, I'll show you how to flawlessly configure lifecycle hooks. But before we get to the configuration, let's understand what is a lifecycle hook and what are the use cases for this. Lifecycle hooks allow you to pause instances and perform custom actions when a scale in or a scale out activity happens. So when the auto scaling group is launching instances or terminating instances, you can have the lifecycle hook intercept this process which will cause the instances to be paused and you can take some custom actions. When the action has been completed, the instance can continue to launch or continue to terminate. When a lifecycle hook is configured, the instance is put into a wait state until you instruct the instance to continue or the timeout period expires. Let's look at the workflow of an auto scaling group without lifecycle hooks. So you have an auto scaling group, a scale out activity happens, this means a new EC2 instance has been launched, the instance is first put into a pending state, there are some checks that are performed and then the instance moves into in service. At this point the instance has started serving traffic. When a scale in event happens, meaning when you instruct the EC2 instance to terminate, the instance will first enter the terminating state and then it enters the terminated state. This is the workflow of an EC2 instance that belongs to an auto scaling group without lifecycle hooks. Now let's understand this with lifecycle hooks enabled. So you have the auto scaling group, a scale out activity happens, the instance will first enter the pending state and at this point, the lifecycle hook will intercept the instance and put it into a pending wait state. At this point, you can take your custom actions. That could be installing a software or updating some packages, etc. When the work is completed, you need to instruct the EC2 instance to proceed. And at that moment, it will move to in service. When a scale in event happens, the instance first moves to the terminating state and at this point, it is intercepted by the lifecycle hook. The lifecycle hook puts the instance into a terminating wait state. And at this stage, we can take some custom actions like backing up the logs. And when the custom action has been completed, we need to instruct the instance to move to a terminating proceed state, and then the instance will be terminated. Now let's look at some use cases for this. A common use case is to install a custom software at instance launch. Maybe it could be a monitoring software that you need to install on the instance before it starts serving traffic. Another common use case is to export the logs before the instance terminates. Another use case is to invoke a Lambda function when a lifecycle action occurs. We can configure the Lambda function to send a notification or maybe send an email or perform some other custom action. Another use case is to send a notification when an instance launches or terminates. Or we could also use lifecycle hooks to run a custom script at instance launch. And this is the use case that we are going to configure. Let's get to the configuration now. Alright, before we configure the lifecycle hook, let's look at the script that we are going to use. This script will be supplied as user data to the EC2 instance. The first command is the path to the interpreter, which is slash bin slash bash. The next command installs HTTPD or Apache. So the purpose of this lifecycle hook is to ensure that the instance has Apache installed on top of it before it starts serving traffic. Now you can replace this with any other utility that you want to install. We are only using Apache as an example over here so the instance will only be allowed to serve traffic if it has Apache installed on top of it. So this command here, yum install httpd minus y, will make sure that Apache gets installed. We then have two ampersands and then a backslash. The ampersand causes the next command to be invoked or executed only if this command is successful. So this command will only be executed if this command was executed successfully and that's the job of the ampersand that you see here. The backslash allows you to continue the command and move to the next line. So the backslash is used to concatenate both these lines that you see over here. 
on the next command we are starting the httpd service so service httpd start and then we are again saying ampersand which means it can only move to the next command if this command executes successfully and the backslash is used to concatenate both the commands on the next command we are defining a variable called instance id and that will grab the instance id by executing this url to collect the metadata as you may already know that instance metadata can be used to collect information like public ip private ip host name instance id etc so we are using the url to collect the metadata and we are only specifically looking at the instance id and that is going to be stored in this variable again we have two ampersands which means we can only move to the next line if this command has executed successfully the next two commands will determine the output of the lifecycle hook it starts with aws and the command belongs to the auto scaling service the keyword that we're going to use is complete lifecycle action keep in mind the task of intercepting the instance is that of the hook this is not the hook this is the script that will perform the custom action so the instance will launch it will be intercepted by the hook the script will execute and it's the job of the script to tell the instance whether it can continue or not to do that we're writing a command here that says complete lifecycle action and here's the keyword lifecycle action result and we are saying continue this happens only if these have happened that's why we have the ampersand so this command has to execute and then this has to execute and this has to execute and when all of that happens we are saying we want to continue then we need to supply the required variables so instance id and then we call the same variable from here all right and then we have to specify the lifecycle hook name which will be configured later on i'm going to call it as my first hook and then the auto scaling group name i'm going to call that as my asg and we also need to provide the region name if you're configuring this from a different region then you need to provide the region code for that and make a note here we are no longer using the ampersand instead we are using two pipes that means any one of these two commands will execute the first command will set the result to continue the second command will set the result to abandon meaning the instance will not be allowed to enter in service so what we're saying here is if these commands have executed successfully then we want to set the result as continue otherwise the pipe otherwise we're going to set the result to abandon I hope you're able to follow along with me now before we continue I want to stress on the things that can make or break this configuration number one notice we are using the AWS command that means the AMI that you're using should have AWS command line tools installed on top of it I'm going to use the Amazon Linux AMI which already has the AWS command line tools installed on it so it's going to work fine for me if you choose to use any other AMI then you will need to insert one more command here to first install the AWS command line tools and then you will be able to run this command if you're using an AMI that already has AWS command line tools pre-installed like Amazon Linux AMI that's fine the second important thing is that this command is from the auto scaling service this script is going to be executed by an EC2 instance and the command belongs to the auto scaling service as you would know by default different AWS services don't talk to each other so if you want the EC2 instance to be able to successfully run this command the EC2 instance will need to have permissions on the auto scaling service that can be achieved with an IAM role the third important thing to keep in mind is the lifecycle hook name when you configure the hook you need to give it the exact same name the fourth important thing to keep in mind is the auto scaling group name and lastly the region code has to be correct 
If any of these is not correct, the lifecycle hook is not going to work. Having understood this, now let's get to the configuration. All right, I'm here at the AWS console. The first thing I'm gonna do is navigate to Identity and Access Management and configure the IAM role. Let's go to Roles here and click on Create Role. The AWS service that needs access is EC2. I'll click on Next. We need to provide permissions for auto-scaling. So here we have a predefined policy called auto scaling full access that makes it easy for us. So I'm gonna select that policy and click next. Not gonna provide tags right now. Click next review and let's call this as EC2 auto scaling role. Okay, and click on create role. All right, so that's configured. Let's now go back to EC2. All right, back to the EC2 console Let's now configure the auto scaling group. Notice a message on screen that says a new EC2 console is being rolled out. I've tried the configuration of the auto scaling group from the new console, but I did not find it very comfortable, so I'm going to stick with the old console. By the time you watch this video, or by the time you perform the configuration, the new auto scaling console may have already been rolled out, but regardless of that, the steps will remain the same. Before we can configure an auto scaling group, we first need to configure a launch configuration. A launch configuration is a template used by the auto scaling group to launch EC2 instances. So we'll click on create launch configuration. I'm going to use the Amazon Linux AMI and the T2 micro instance type is fine. I'll click on next configure details. We need to provide a name going to call this as my launch config and here we need to provide the IAM role. The IAM role provides the EC2 instances the required permissions on the auto scaling service. Under advanced details we'll provide the user data script. One thing you want to make sure is that the region name matches the region code here. So right now I'm configuring this from the London region so this should be set to EU West Two, EU West 2 and I'll click on next the default storage is fine I'll click on next for security group I'm going to add a security group that allows inbound HTTP on port 80 the script that we've written installs Apache on the EC2 instance so when the Apache installation is completed we should be able to see the default installation page when we try to access the instance on HTTP port 80 so select a security group that allows HTTP on port 80 inbound and I'll click on review, create launch configuration. I'll select a key pair and click create launch configuration. So now the launch configuration has been created. We'll click on close and we'll navigate to auto scaling groups. I'll click on create auto scaling group. We're going to use a launch configuration we could use a launch template as well, but right now we're going to use the launch configuration that we created called my launch config. I'll click on next. We need to provide an auto scaling group name. I'm going to call it as my ASG. Keep in mind the group name that you specify here must match the group name that you've specified in the script. I'll set the group size to zero. And the reason for this is that as soon as you save the auto scaling group, it will launch a new instance to match the group size. The lifecycle hook configuration is not part of the auto scaling group creation process. We first need to create the auto scaling group and then we need to create the lifecycle hook. So if we set it to one or any other number, the instance will start launching even before we configure the lifecycle hook. So that's why we're setting this to zero and I'm going to add a couple of subnets here. All right. And under advanced details, we can choose to register the instances behind a load balancer. But right now we're not going to do that. And I'm going to set the health check grace period to zero. So as soon as the instance is launched, auto scaling will start checking the health of the EC2 instances. 
For scaling policies, we'll keep the group size at its initial size. We're not configuring notifications for now. I'm not going to add any tags. I'll click on review. So all we've done is we've provided a name and we've set the group size to zero and we're going to create the auto scaling group. So that's completed. I'll click on close and here we can see the auto scaling group and right now the desired capacity is zero. Lifecycle hooks can be configured from here and as you can see it's a separate configuration from the auto scaling. So we first need to configure this and then we need to configure the hook, which is why we set the desired capacity as zero. So I'll click on create lifecycle hook. We need to provide a name. The name must match what you provided in the script. I'm going to call it as my first hook. It automatically picks up the auto scaling group name. And the lifecycle transition can be used to specify when do you want the instance to be intercepted at launch or at termination. We're going to say instance launch. And here's the default timeout, which is 3600 seconds. So if we do not set a result within 3600 seconds, the timer will expire and it will go for the default result. In our case, the default result would not matter because we already have both the results configured in the script. So if we go back to the script here, we can see that the script automatically sets the result as continue or abandon depending on all these three executing successfully or not. So in our case, it doesn't really matter what we set as the default result because both the results have been taken care in the script. And here we can specify a message that needs to be included in the notification. So all we've done here is we've provided the lifecycle hook name and we've said the lifecycle transition has to happen at instance launch. And we'll click on create. So now the auto scaling group is ready. The hook is ready to intercept the instance. Let's give it a try. I'll go to actions, edit, and set the desired capacity to one, minimum to one, and maximum to one. The reason being that the desired capacity cannot be lower than the minimum or higher than the maximum. So I've set everything to one. And as soon as I click on save, we should see a new EC2 instance being launched. So we'll click on save here. And we can see a new instance is being launched. If we go down here to activity history and click refresh, we can see that a new EC2 instance is being launched. And if we go to instances, we can see that the instance has entered the pending state at this point, the lifecycle hook will intercept the instance and put it into a pending wait state. Let's do a refresh. All right, so after about three seconds, the instance has entered the pending wait state. At this time, the script is being executed. Let's go back to the script here. So this command has to execute successfully and this command has to execute and this command has to execute. If everything happens, then the instance will be allowed to continue. Otherwise, the launch process will be abandoned. Let's go back to the EC2 console and try to refresh this. And now we can see that the instance has moved to in-service. That means our script has successfully executed. One way to test that is go back to instances over here and that's our instance. So we'll grab the public IP address and we'll try to access it from a new browser window. We should see the default Apache installation page. So that's how you configure a lifecycle hook. If you found this video helpful, smash the thumbs up to let me know. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below.